Hey guys, I'm back with another exciting video. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Make and OpenAI to create beautiful presentations in a matter of seconds. This setup is built on top of my text to diagrams workflow that I showed you in one of my previous videos. That workflow alone has allowed me to cut down a significant amount of time it takes me to create diagrams for proposals and various other use cases. So obviously I wanted to take things up a notch and create a setup that allows me to create not just diagrams, but entire presentations. The setup is a bit complicated and involves multiple sub workflows. But as always, I will do my best to explain everything in detail. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here I am on the Miro board. And as always, I'm going to walk you through the setup step by step and explain the role of each component in the setup and how exactly we're going to use it to build our workflow that is going to create our presentations. So the first thing that we need is we need some kind of an input. So as a user who wants to create these presentations, it needs to provide the input, provide some context about the presentation and uh, some other information, including does the presentation need to include any images or any other media? So the input is going to be context about the presentation and, and let's say media requirements. Very good. The second thing that we need, let me get rid of the space here and just say, and media requirements. So that's going to be the input. And the second thing that we need is once we have the input, and especially if there's going to be any media requirements, we are going to generate this media. So we are automating the entire thing we want. We want the presentation to be fully automated. And we also want to automate the creation of this media or sourcing of this media. What we're going to do is in this step, uh, this is going to be create media step. And this might go through a couple of iterations of its own. So the first one would be if you need to source any images. And then the second one will be if you need to create any diagrams. So there could be a couple of things that we need for this presentation. And this information, whether we need this or not, is going to come from our input. Uh, so we're going to do that in this step. And this will go through some sub workflows, which I'll explain in a bit. And then the next thing we're going to need is uh, once we have the context about the presentation and we have the media, it is finally time to generate the presentation. And this will use the context plus media, right? So this will all come from the previous uh, two steps. Uh, so once we have the presentation, what we're going to do is we are going to drop it to our desktop so that we can open this file review it, make any edits that we need to, and export it to wherever we need to export it to. So I'm just going to add the last step here, open, review, edit, and finally export. So these are the steps that we are going to go through at a high level. So while we are at it, let's also map out the apps or modules in Make that we are going to use to make all of these things happen. So for this one, similar to my text to diagrams workflow, we are going to leverage fill out. It's a pretty easy form builder and very convenient to just collect the requirements and then send it over to make. And then in make, uh, it is easily, and then in make, all we have to do is use the answers that fill out sends to us and then uh, map it to different modules. So for example, we will map the media requirements to the media module and the presentation requirements to the presentation module. Uh, so all of this will make sense once we go through the setup. So the next thing for generating the media, what we're going to do here is we are going to leverage two different modules. So the first one is going to be on Splash. And this is a free photo platform where you can get royalty free images and they also have an API. So we are going to connect that API to make and then based on the media requirements, especially for images, we're going to use the query or we're going to use the input from the user as a query for these images and then fetch them using Unsplash. So that's going to be for step one of the create media. And then step two, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage my text to diagram a workflow. And what I've done is I have modified my workflow so that it can accept a request and then send a response back. And that way it acts as a sub workflow. And I will show that to you in a second. And then finally, once we have these two things for this one, it's obvious we are going to use OpenAI. So we're going to send all of these requirements to OpenAI with some very hefty prompt and then ask it to create our presentation. And then finally, for this one, to place the files on our desktop, you have several options here. You can use OneDrive, you can use Google Drive. In my case, I'm just going to use Dropbox, which is already 
set up with my desktop. And then finally, for this, we are going to use an app called Dexet. And there's a very specific reason we're going to use Dexet, which will all make sense. And actually, I will also show you an alternative, which is a free version called MARP. And these are the two apps that we are going to use to open the presentation, review it, edit it, and then export it. So this is the setup at a high level. And essentially, the core component of this is over here, right? So Unsplash is fine. It's an API. You send it a query, it sends some images back. Text to diagram. If you uh, don't know how this works, uh, I will link to my previous video where I explained the setup for this in a pretty good detail. So today I'm not going to go into the details of this one, but we are going to be leveraging this one. And then finally for OpenAI, the trick here is we can create the prompt just fine. That's not a problem, but we need the output to be in a very specific format. And that format is called Markdown. If you haven't used Markdown, it's pretty easy to use. It's basically a way to type up your text documentation in a very specific format, which is then easily readable by tools like Dexet and MARP and converts this Markdown text into presentations. This is also the same thing that is used by Notion, by the way. So if you use Notion, you can easily type Markdown to make your documentation a lot easier. So if you haven't used Markdown before, I highly recommend checking it out. It is a very convenient way to create documentation without spending too much time on formatting and things like that. And it's also very easy to convert that same documentation into slides using these apps like Dexet and Mark. And then what you can do here, once you have the Markdown file, you can import it into these apps. You can review your presentation, make the changes. And then finally, once you export it, you can export it as a PDF, as a PowerPoint, or as Google Slides, and then so on and so forth. So basically, this markdown file is going to act as our bridge between our input and the final slides that we are after. So you don't have to be a markdown expert to build this workflow. Just know that this is what we are using behind the scenes to facilitate this entire uh, setup. Awesome. So that's the setup, as I mentioned, on Splash and text to diagram. I won't go into too much details, but now let's take a look at the demo. Okay, so let me go here in make. And what I have, as I said, we are going to be leveraging two different workflows. So the first one is the slides generator workflow. So this is our main workflow that is used to generate our slides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this so that it's listening for my input. And then I will go to fill out where I have my questionnaire that I'm going to fill to essentially provide the input to my workflow. As you can see right away, it asked me provide a detailed context for your slide. Hey, if you're enjoying this tutorial, you might want to check out No Code University, where I have a ton of practical courses on similar topics, including Airtable and Zapier. You can learn everything you need to know to unlock high income opportunities in the no code and AI space. To get started, you can find the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So I'll say create a presentation on the topic intro to no code and its benefits. There we go. And then I have a few more questions. So first one is select audience. So here I'm basically trying to tell it this presentation is for technical ex executives, non-technical executives, students with beginner level or students with an advanced level. So I'll say this is for executives who are non-technical because I'm trying to introduce them to no code. And then finally for the role, it's basically asking me this presentation is from a perspective of a consultant, a founder, teacher, or whoever. And you can add, you know, any other role that you might see fit here. So for this one, I'll say I'll add it, I'll create it from the perspective of a consultant. And then here for the additional requirements, these are the media requirements that we talked about, whether we need images and diagrams. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I will say that, yes, I do need images and I do need a technical diagram. So it says describe images. So for the image, I'll uh, just keep it simple for now. And I'll say, add an image uh, around, let's say software development. And then for the technical diagram, and this is going to look familiar if you watch my previous video, which was the text to diagram workflow, basically ask what kind of technical diagram you want to include. Is it a graph? Is it a sequence? Is it a pie chart? Whatever. So I'll just say graph for now. And then say, and then the next question is give a description for this technical diagram. So I will say, create a short version of the software development life cycle that would be that would represent software development in the no code space there we go so let's make sure that my workflow is running it's listening and as soon as i hit submit 
it is going to send the input here and it's going to start doing its work. So it already got the image from OneSplash. Now it is creating my diagram. And then finally, it is creating the presentation. And as soon as it is created, it is going to get dropped on my desktop using the Dropbox module. And then we will be able to open it using Dexet or any other similar tool. So this one obviously takes a, a few seconds because it is creating the entire presentation and including all the diagrams and everything in it. There we go. Seems like the presentation is ready and has already been dropped onto my desktop. Very cool. So what we need to do now is we need to open uh, one of those applications that I mentioned. So we can either open Dexet or we can open MARP. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm actually first going to open the presentation in a text editor just so we can see what it created. So let's open VS Code and it doesn't have to be VS Code. It can be any simple text editor. So I'll click on File Open. And I know my presentations are dropped in the uh, Dropbox folder. So this is the one that just got created, uh, AI Slides 1. The name in the setup is static, so it will keep adding numbers to it every time I create a new presentation, but this can obviously be made dynamic as well. But, but I know that this is the one that just got dropped. So I'll click on Open, and there we go. So this, what we see here, is the markdown for the slide that OpenAI generated for us. And the way it works is that each slide is separated by these three dashes. And that's how these uh, presentation tools like TechSet and MARP know that this is a new slide. And all of this that you see here is basically markdown code that can be used to view this as a presentation. So what you can do here is if you're familiar with markdown, you can review it, you can make changes to it. And once you think that everything looks good, then you can use the presentation tool of your choice to open this file and this will uh, create your presentation. So that's exactly what we are going to do now. So I'm going to open this tool called Dexet. It's installed on my desktop. So this one is a paid tool, but as I mentioned, there are other free tools available for the same purpose as well. But since I have this handy, I'm just going to open this. So as soon as I open this, the same thing, I'm going to click on File, Open, and I'm going to look for the same file, the Markdown file. So I click on AI Slides 1.md, and voila, we have a presentation. So let me make this full screen. And as you can see, if we compare this to our code here or our markdown file here, uh, the first slide has intro to no code, enabling business innovation without coding expertise. And that's exactly what we see here. Second slide is the agenda slide, has understanding uh, no code, why does no code matter, so on and so forth. And that's exactly what we see here. Very cool. So what you can do in markdown is once you are basically happy with the text here of the slides. And also, as soon as you make any changes here, so let's say if I add one more agenda item, let's say demo, and if I save, that one is going to get represented here immediately. So now we see demo here as well. So yeah, so once you're happy with the actual presentation content, you can click on this button here, and then you can use any of these built-in themes that Dexet provides. I think it comes with quite a few. Yeah, there we go. And then you can like basically click on different themes and see which one makes your presentation look the best and then pick that one and then be on your way. So let's say we go with this one or let's say maybe use this plain Jane. There we go. And let's go through it one slide at a time because I want to see exactly what's going on. So we got our title slide, we got our agenda and it looks like here we got an image, uh, but the image is small. So sometimes in this cases, you have to go back to the markdown file and see why the image is small. So what we can do is we can take this URL and we can open it in the browser to see what is the size of the image. So remember, I provided it software development as a query. So it went to Unsplash and grabbed a software development image. Now the only problem is that currently in our presentation, it is really small. So let's go back here and see what we can do about this. And typically it is a matter of fixing the syntax in the markdown file to make sure that this is exactly what uh, Dexet is expecting. So let me hit enter here and hit save and then go back to Dexet. And yeah, there we go. So I think since it was trying to place the image on the right, it does expect a space after the syntax over here. And I think this is the same problem we are facing here on the left as well. So I think on this slide, it was trying to place the image on the left and it is expecting an enter or an empty line after the image. So let's go to the next slide. And there we go. So this is on the right and this is on the left. So let me escape. There we go. So this is the right one and this is the left one. Very good. And so this, uh, this is the image. This is the uh, presentation. 
And then I think we also had a diagram. So I think the diagram got dropped here. So this is automatically created using my text to diagram generation tool. So let's see what it was trying to do on this one. I think it's on slide right here. And it is probably trying to put it a full screen. And there we go. So full screen actually isn't really working well in this case. So maybe we just need to drop the heading altogether on this slide, save, and there we go. Yeah, so it, it does fit very well, just that the diagram itself is not very pretty. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna look great. So you can always reiterate and try a different diagram or just if you have one, if you have a basically a URL handy, you can just replace it here and uh, update your slides directly. But all in all, we have a pretty good looking presentation. We are able to make changes to it. We are able to view it. And in fact, the content itself also is not too bad. It's you know, giving us a recap. It is giving the Q&A slide, everything. So it's a pretty good starting point if you're trying to create presentations. You can use this setup to create the presentation and then make your edits, uh, add and replace the images, the diagrams and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, and then I won't go into other details about DeckSet. You can feel free to explore it. Let's go back to Make now and actually walk through the setup and how exactly I am achieving this. So let's go to the browser and let's go to Make. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, so let me walk you through step by step. And if you're familiar with Make, just by looking at the image, it should be pretty clear exactly what's happening. But for people who are just getting started with Make, let's go through step by step. Okay. So the first thing is, as we have a fill out module, this one is a straightforward. You create a form and fill out. And here, basically, you connect that form to this. It's not showing me the name of the form, but when you create a new one, uh, you basically click on add and you connect to your fill out account. And then it allows you to select the form that you want it to be connected to. So I, I selected slice generator and I gave it a name and then basically I got this output and now it is always listening for any new changes that are coming in from fill out. So that's step number one. So once we get in here, what's happening is basically I have a router and the reason I have a router is because if you notice in the form, if I click on fill again, the two questions around the media requirements are optional. So it doesn't, this one doesn't show up until I hit check. And this one, these two don't show up until I hit check on this one. So basically what I have here is I use a router to see if the describe images, which is essentially this question over here, is there's an answer. If it's not empty, only then we need to go and look for an image using Unsplash. If it is true, if it is, if it, if there is a value indeed, it will go to Unsplash, get the uh, get the image, and then using the set variable, I will store the URL that I get back from Unsplash in a variable called Unsplash URL. So this flow will only work if I check the image required and provide a description for the image because otherwise it doesn't have a query. It doesn't know what kind of image to look for. Okay, so the second one, the second one is similar. So this one is looking for whether a technical diagram is required. And if it is required, if the details have been provided or not, if the details have been provided, then it is going to make use of the HTTP module, which is basically making a call to my diagram generator, which is this other workflow. And as you can see, the URL for this one is ZPT3. And if we go here, we can see it is a ZPT3. And then this webhook is expecting three values. So the type of diagram, the direction of the diagram, and the description for the diagram. So I said left to right for now, and you can always make it dynamic, just like I did for my text to diagram workflow. So it takes these three inputs. And then on the other side, what we get is a, a URL. So if we open this, if we open the download output bundles and copy this URL and open it in the browser, what you're going to get is essentially the same image that we have in our presentation. So this is dynamically generated, right? Like I gave it, create a workflow of a typical software development life cycle. So it gave us defined requirements, select platform, design the solution, test solution, deploy, monitor. So it's a pretty, cool, pretty typical SDLC. So it did a pretty good job. The better I explain the diagram, the better the diagram is going to look, but you, know, you get the idea. So that's the step number two. So it will go here, it will go boom, boom, upload the thing and in the webhook return the image URL. And then what I do here is I essentially capture that image URL and then I save it in a variable called diagram URL. So now I have two things. I have the Unsplash URL and I have the 
diagram URL. And of course, you can have more diagrams and more images if you want, and uh, you just save them in a different variable and then use them in the third and final step of the router, which is basically where, so the way uh, make works is, it will go to this one, it'll go to this one, and then finally it'll go to the one that does not have any filter. It will go to all the filtered routes, and then it goes to an unfiltered route. Uh, so once it goes here, I get the unsplash URL, which we saved here, and then in the next step, I get the diagram URL, which we saved here. And then finally, in OpenAI, this is where everything happens. I have a giant prompt, which is taking from all the other inputs. It is taking from uh, the role, the audience, uh, the description of the slides, the diagram URL, the unsplash URL, and it is, and I've given it very specific requirements on how to create this presentation. And the final uh, message here is the output should be a markdown text. So what happens is if you look at the output of this, if you go to the result, you will see the same markdown, the same markdown here that we saw in our code editor. This is literally the same thing that is coming from OpenAI. And then finally in Dropbox module, we give our file a name, a folder where we want to drop these, drop this markdown. And then the result is the actual markdown. And the output of this is this file that I showed you earlier. So that is the entire setup. And what I will do also is I will drop the prompt that I'm using in the description below so that if you want to create a similar uh, setup uh, in your uh, make environment, you can do that. I recommend starting maybe with just a simple route uh, and not worry about images and uh, text to diagram generation. Maybe start with this one. And then if that works, then add on the Unsplash and then add on the other stuff. And then finally for this one, you can use anything, Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever works for you. And yeah, and the last thing, as I promised, if you don't have deck set, you can use MARP. Uh, so let me just quickly show you if I go to MARP. So it's again, a Markdown presentation ecosystem. It has a VS Code extension as well as a desktop. So you can either use it in VS Code or you can use it on your desktop. So in VS Code, let me quickly show you. I have it already installed, so I see this icon. And what I have to do is when I click on this, it says toggle MARP preview for the current Markdown. So it's a I won't go into too much detail, but essentially MARP has slightly different requirements than TechSet. So once I click on this, it is going to add this thing at the top, which then tells it that, okay, now this is a MARP file. <laughs> I don't know why it needs it, but whatever. And then once this is added, what we can do is we can click on this preview button and then we can view the slides right here within VS Code. The only thing is then the image syntax that was used for Dexet doesn't work with MARP. So there's you know some discrepancies, but essentially you can still get to slides from Markdown for free using MARP extension. And then finally, what you can do is you can click on this, actually not here. Let's try again, yeah, export. So when I click on this, what I can also do is export slide deck, right? So that was our final step. And then I can select a format, whether I need a PDF, whether I need a PowerPoint and so on and so forth. If I do a PowerPoint, I can import it into Google Slides or PowerPoint, or let's just do PDF slide deck for now and see what we get. So it's exporting. And by the way, you can do the same with Dexet as well. Uh, if I go here, once you are settled with the theme, you can click on file. Okay, there we go. The MARP PDF just came up. So that looks pretty good. And let's try this with Dexet as well. I think it is share. Maybe this one, I'm forgetting, yeah, there we go. So PDF, uh, JPEG or PNG, and then you can include the image resolution. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing me other options and then other details as well and click on next, select the location, so on and so forth. And then you can export basically the PDF from Dexet as well. There we go, I think it just dropped it directly into, there we go. So this one is now coming from Dexet, as you can see, this is the black and white one that we did. And then you can see the diagram and everything. So there we go. And then if you want, you can just use Dexet to present it. You can just click on, I believe this is the presentation button, not this one. Play, play slideshow, there we go. Yeah, so you can present directly from here as well if you want to do that. Uh, no animation in Markdown slides, of course, but if you import it into Google Slides or PowerPoint, then you can add in presentations as well. So that's pretty much it. Let's go back to the Miro board. And yeah, so we went through the input, which was fill out, and then we created the images and diagrams. Then we used OpenAI to create the actual presentation. 
and then used the presentation and dropped it to our desktop using Dropbox. And finally, we reviewed it using Dexet and Marp. So yeah, so that's the setup. I will drop the prompt in the description below and I hope you give it a shot. I'm definitely going to use this setup to create presentations just like I've been using it to create my diagrams for sure. So that's it for this one. I will stop here and I'll see you in the next one.